And what he didn't really realize, which is really interesting. You know, one thing, we, we credit Leonardo with a lot of stuff. One thing we don't credit him is what he could have done using the material at his hand was to think about an extra dimension and all this stuff. He was a master draftsman. All he had to do was think, how do I make a hypercube out of a cube? If he thought about how the square was constructed out of a line segment, he could have done it. So you take your point, you drag it a certain distance, you take that distance, you drag it along an extra axis at right angle to this one, you get a square. It's about a point, you get to a square. Then you take the square and you drag it over along a line that's at right angle to this. Oops. Yeah. And you drag this one along a line that comes out here. Right? So you take a line this distance here from here, and you drag it along, and you'll get a cube. So to get a hypercube, you create a fourth axis, and you drag your fourth, you drag your cube along that fourth axis. That's a hypercube. We can't see it, but that doesn't mean it doesn't exist. It exists. The mathematician's mind, it really exists. So that's a hypercube. That's what it looks like. That's what a hypercube looks like. So to construct the volume of a hypercube, to sorry, to find to double the volume of a hypercube means you have to find the fourth root of two. But the funny thing is that from Euclidean constructions, the fourth root of two is constructible because the fourth root of two is the square root of the square root of two. Since we can construct the square root of two, we can all con we can also construct its square root. So you can, in fact, duplicate the volume of a hypercube, but you cannot duplicate the volume of a cube. He hadn't thought about that, but he could have done it. Right? It's really interesting that he could have done this. Then he would have been immortal. I mean, that the first time anybody's ever thought about the fourth dimension. It would have been done 500 years ago. But that had to work much, much longer. Ago. So this is basically what I just said, that you can always find the fourth root. So here we have some, some sketches of the platonic solids. One thing he did is to, uh, is to find the center of gravity of the tetrahedron. Microtonic solids coming from Monticelli's book in the Divine Proportion. The original copy of the book lies in Torino. I actually looked at it. I actually looked at the original sketches of, uh, of uh, Leonardo in it. It's just amazing. It's really, it makes you shiver, right? Because this is the hand of Leonardo that sketched these. It's not a print, this is the actual thing. And so we have various platonic solids with various interpretations. And you have the, uh, the Vitruvian man. And this is actually stuff that he got from other people. I mean, this is not a Leonardo original thing. This is really from Vitruvius' lost treatise on, on, the human, on the human being and uh, the fact that there's mathematical proportions associated to these. So for example, four fingers make one palm. Right? 20, uh, 24 palms make a man. 24 palms go on top of the other, you get a man. So you get the approximate height of a man in the Renaissance time. The length of a man's outspread arms is equal to his height. That's why he's always shown this way. So that you can measure it from tip to tip, you get the approximate height of a person. The greatest width of the shoulders contains it. It's up the fourth part of a man. So that's four. And so on and so on. So there's all these mathematical interpretations to what's going on. Here's a correct calculation of the center's gravity of various pyramids. That he did. That's an engineering feat. Then he liked to go into uh, cryptography. Now, before you ask me about the Vinci Listen to this part. He liked, he liked this part, which is the rebus, right? So you sort of write mirror image, and then you replace the word by an image in the hope that the person that's reading recognizes the image and then associates the word. And this says felice. Felice sarei se la se. Sella, sella, um, this is a Sarah Horse, you know, Horse, what do you call it? Saddle. A saddle, right? Sella in Italian, right? Which looks like a saddle, right? Felice sarei sella more che ti porto. And then it goes on and on. This is the door, porta. Makes sense. But he dropped the E in che ti porto. And here he's really thinking about, uh, <coughs> he's thinking about one of his apprentices, Salon. The possibility of Leonardo was gay, for what it's worth. And Salai was one of his pupils. And he obviously loved Salai, but Salai was a very difficult young man. In fact, a lot of the stuff that was left to Salai, Salai just sold it. Whereas Melzi kept it all himself, then passed it on at his death to his nephew, but then sold it. So which is why we're missing so much. You know, it's too bad. Secret writings, uh, we have the, the so-called uh, memorandum from Linnean 1500. Um, it's, 
a very strange thing. So, for example, you'll find these words. Trova in G. This is actually written in Italian from right to left, which really means trova lingi. See, you know, you read lingi the other way around. So L-I-G-N-I, -I, which means fine lingi, right? Ilopanna a Napoli. See, in Naples. You have to go there to find it. And so he reminds himself to make to bring a blanket. So he actually wrote stuff. He used his, his manuscripts also as agendas. <laughs> you remind yourself you're gonna bring a blanket because it's gonna be cold or I'm going. So he knew he would be reading that the next day or the next weekend, so we'd have to bring all this stuff with him. Again from Codex Atlanticus. And here, basically I think that's the last page, he also reminds himself, have them send you large corn stalks from Florence. Wow, that's something. And here you can see the arithmetic progression. It's really cool, right? Okay? On two, three, four, he realizes all oh, these differ by one. Let's take 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, and these differ by 2, right? <laughs> and then it goes 3, 7, 9, 13, and it makes them differ by then a 4, 2, 4, which is interesting. And he's thinking about this. So he's thinking about other right progressions. Right? You can only go so far. Um, that's pretty much it. So thank you for your attention. The association between the atomic, atomic solids and the and the, the elements. four elements plus uh, ether right. um, was that something that he assigned or was it no, no, this was something him? This was something that was assigned prior to him. Long prior or recent? Was it Greek or the was Greek. it? Oh, okay. it was so Greek. it's a thousand years. Solids. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Right. That, that would have been passed on to him by Pacholi. Okay. 